Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, viewers. My name is Ferris Wee, one of the master trainer. Uh, welcome to today's IF, uh, IFL AMA Ask Me Anything segment for the topic on money sense for your child. For those of you who are not familiar with us, IFL stands for Institute for Financial Literacy. It is a collaboration between Money Sense, the National Financial Education Program, and Singapore Polytechnic International. So essentially, we are the outreach arm of Money Sense, and we conduct free and unbiased financial education programs for the public. So the purpose of today's AMA segment is to address parents' questions on how we can help our children to improve or cultivate good money sense. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, just want to let all of you know, right, as IFL is not associated with any financial institution, this session aims to help you evaluate information. It will not involve any advice in product selection, should there be mention of any industry, company or services or reference to product, it is solely for the purpose of illustration and application of concepts, right? So we we want to uh, encourage viewers that you should consult a licensed financial advisor before making a decision to invest in any product. So this is a topic, money sense for your child. It's a topic which parents are increasingly concerned uh, with and for our children, including myself, right? As parents, we are concerned with our children's well-being in every aspect beyond formal education. And parents are not only wondering uh, how to impart a financial literacy and also how to start at an early age. Uh, Warren Buffett, the legendary uh, investor, said parents wait until their kids, their children are in their teenage years, right, before talking about managing money when they should start as early as preschool. A child's earliest interactions with money is spending it. Habits need to be inculcated from a young age as spending is a habit so is savings a habit. With that, we want to run a simple poll just to hear um, from you. While the poll is going on, right, um, we want to let you know that you can uh, actually continue to vote uh, and I will share more, right? Why do you think it is important to teach financial education for your children, right? So as the poll is going on, uh, uh, there will be three options for you to choose to improve um, your children's lives as it is a life skill, right? To go from surviving to thriving to enable them to meet their financial goals. So viewers, we would like to encourage you to participate in the poll uh, that my colleague has uh, is posting right now in the Facebook. Uh, why do you think it is important to teach financial education for your children, right? Is it such that it will improve their lives as is uh, shown here, uh, as it, this is a life skill, help them um, to go from surviving to thriving, right? To enable them to meet their financial goals. Keep your responses coming as we will collate your responses, right? As we are waiting for the responses, um, we just want to let you know that there's a very interesting uh, study that shows that there are merits in introducing financial literacy at an early age. They indicated that uh, proper money management habits, right, when introduced at a young age, will actually help our children throughout uh, our lives, right? So let us see the poll results. Wow, there's an overwhelming uh, response. About 70% of you voted that you wanted to improve their lives as this is a life skill, right? Um, a, a smaller percentage to go from surviving to thriving. While the next um, vote, right, would be to enable them to meet their financial goals. So, we want to let you know that financial education is crucial. And studies have shown, right, that early introduction introduction has its merits, have I shared earlier. In fact, there's a study from the United States NFEC, National Financial Educator Council, Education Council indicating that proper money management habits when introduced at a young age will anchor our child throughout their lives, right? So um, according to them, they say, why is financial literacy important for youth? Because when youth are not um, taught good money habits 
and the reasoning behind them. Um, they also share that um, uh, children will pick up and model the relationship with money of the adults in their lives. So for example, it can be yourself, if you are a parent, a guardian, foster parents, adult, and people who are in their lives. But most importantly, right, it is important is because their observation shares that when their children learn at a young age, right, these children become less impressionable to the attitudes of the money right, held by the adults around them. So what does it mean? It means that they are not easily influenced by others. Once they acquire good financial literacy skill, having a good relationship with money, it then becomes an invaluable lifelong skill. Right. So in IFL, we have a complementary uh, activity-based workshop, um, Money Sense for Your Child, who teaches um, which teaches pa uh, parents right uh, how to introduce these important concepts depending of the age group of your children. So for those who are keen, you can actually Google or go to IFL website under the event page. You can sign up this session. So let me cover three age groups and the core principles that these uh, topics offer, which you can actually sign up and attend uh, uh, these uh, workshops and learn from them, right? Learn from our trainers who will be sharing. For preschool children, the three to six years old, we want to be able to inculcate the right money habits early by prioritizing needs versus wants and savings. That would include the concept of prioritizing needs over wants, understanding that money is limited and there are uh, trade-offs involved when spending and also understand the difference between a need and a one between needs and wants and the concept of saving the importance of saving as well as um, a concept of saving spending and sharing how about for primary schooler right so primary school children we would like to introduce the principle that a little sacrifice today goes a long way tomorrow right so in the activity based workshop uh, the content will cover things like introducing the concept of delayed gratification understand that declining a small reward today can bring a larger reward tomorrow the importance of developing a long term savings habit right and also saving before spending understand how to budget using saving spending and sharing and budgeting um, understand the concept of budgeting using playtime tokens which is a very powerful tool uh, to teach your children uh, in terms of how to budget then there's secondary schooler secondary schooler would be the very challenging group because they are the teens teenagers, right? And also in today's uh, digital world, we want to guide them to be savvy consumer, right? Being a smart consumer, understand how to budget using a saving goals activity, understanding the power of compounding interest, how it can help you, how they can destroy you, you know, understand the difference between a need and one, and also the different payment methods. Um, uh, right now, in the digital age, the advantages, the disadvantages among the different modes of payment, and also the considerations when using credit and being familiar with good habits when using non-cash methods of payment, like your pay now, pay la, you know, uh, potentially uh, in future when they grow up, go to work uh, and your, um, uh, your credit card, right? So on and so forth. And also the dangers of scams and learn how to avoid being scammed. So we want to encourage you to sign up this um, activity-based workshop which are made available for you. You can uh, find out more from our IFL events page. With that, now we have come to the segment which many of you are waiting for. So what we do is, in a short while, we will go to Slido and let us look at the questions that are posted and we will address them one at a time because this was um, being advertised. So quite a number of you has already posted your questions and we will address them one at a time. Let's go to Slido right now. Wow, thank you for your questions. Uh, for those of you who like to post questions, uh, you just look on the left-hand column, they say join at Slido, right? So you type in Slido, S-L-I-D-O.com, then there will be a pin, uh, a code that they ask for it. You just key in 26360466 and you will be able to post your questions. Let's look at the first question. The first question says that my son saves regularly. 
right? But asked to spend on uh, certain items which I normally would not like, like trading cards or going to arcade, etc. So what's the principle? Mm, okay, so basically, I think this involves learning um, to differentiate between uh, needs and one. So essentially, a need is a must-have, while a one is a wish to have. So if he has been um, saving regularly, this may be items that he wishes to have, something that he enjoys, right? So as parents, we may find it very difficult. Perhaps we feel that they are spending unwisely, right? So when we save regularly, I would like to ask you honestly, um, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you and I would have times that we were splurged to enjoy. Uh, we would have ones that we desire, right? So how different are our children? Perhaps this is an opportunity for him as well as for you that you can work with him to use this as a goal setting or a budgeting exercise, right? So for example, uh, once he has uh, achieved a certain savings goal, you can perhaps celebrate with him by joining him at the arcade or asking him to share what's the purpose of trading cards, you know, how does it work? You know, uh, maybe this is a, a, a very good opportunity. Sorry, excuse me. And this might be a very good opportunity for you to deepen the parent-child relationship uh, with your son. Thank you so much uh, for your question. Right. So let's look at the, the second question. So uh, the second question is goes like this. Say, is coin bank, coin bank, which is the like piggy bank or coin box, right? Still a good way to save to reach delayed gratification. Uh he does he do not know how much he has and but can't make informed decision on extra spending all right so i repeat the question is coin bank still a good way to save to reach delayed gratification he doesn't know how much he has but can't in uh, make informed decision on extra spending well um this, this coin box or coin bank concept um, or, or instrument is actually a good way, right? honestly, to cultivate savings. So, for example, you can save loose change, your coins, your balance that left from the allowance, right? To exercise delayed gratification, perhaps um, this, this muscle, this delayed gratification muscle, right? There has to be uh, opportunities for him to uh, practice, right? So, in IFL, we talk about um, using screen time or play time um, tokens, you know, can be an effective way to teach um, uh, him uh, or your children is a, is a girl, her, about budgeting, time management and exercising delayed gratification, right? Thank you once again for your question, right? Let's look at the next one. Do you recommend uh, giving monetary rewards for helping uh, with household chores? Uh, well, I would say that it will depend on what type of chores, right? Um, the chores that involve basic responsibility or those that are beyond the scope of their responsibility. Um, first of all, right, I wish to qualify that because in IFL, the content we did not cover um, uh, use like renumerating based on chores. So whatever I share is from my personal uh, perspective and is not representative of IFL because these are not covered in the content for the topic for the activity-based workshop that we run, Money Sense, for your child, right? So I would first of all ask, what are the chores that falls into the basic uh, responsibilities category, right? Um, I would say making your bed, washing, uh, clearing their dishes, tidying their room, for example, hanging clothes, you know, um, uh, playing piano, uh, doing their homework, right? So these are basic responsibility. But for chores that are beyond the scope of their responsibility, uh, like for those of you who may have a car, um, uh, even in HDB, sometimes we have simple pot, right? You know, plants and all this thing to planting, design work, creating artifacts to beautify the home. Then this one, perhaps I think that it will be good um, that you can remunerate them as a, as a form of like uh, work Work, to develop work ethic, right? <clears throat> to 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 remunerate them, to give them some form of um 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 money or uh, uh that uh once they work uh they are they are paid right um to to give them the concept of work. So the purpose really first of all is um not remunerating them for the basic responsibility because uh they want to we want to develop basic responsibility at home and a sense of belonging because we all of us. <clears throat> excuse me, need to chip in for our share at home, 
right? Uh, further for chores beyond our scope, right? Uh, as I shared, we can develop their work ethic to stretch their ability to contribute, right? So as I was uh, sharing this, um, just now I remember I talked about the screen time tokens. Uh, so perhaps I was thinking maybe some of you are not familiar with screen time or play time tokens. So let me elaborate how does this work, lah, right? Um, if you want to introduce you to your, to your kids, right? So um, first of all, is you may want which you can Google right playtime tokens or screen time tokens. So one way is you can decide on the number of playtime or screen time tokens to be given to your child and the value of each uh, uh each token. For example, uh, um, ten tokens per week or each token is worth 30 minutes of play or screen time, right? So uh, what happens is, uh, this is to address the earlier question in terms of teaching children budgeting, right? Your child will learn how to budget the spending of their tokens on play time or screen time um, uh, for activities that they like. So over the course of the week, your child needs to manage their play time or screen time based on the number of tokens that they have. Um, so as I uh, was sharing earlier, this is actually a very powerful tool that can help our children understand the concept of budgeting. And usually this is targeted at primary school because they have the cognitive ability to manage it better. Uh, not Definitely not a preschooler. Um, uh, I would say is that uh, maybe primary three onwards, right? Unless your child uh, is quite mature, then you can even introduce a primary two. My, my kid is not ready yet. My kid is primary one. So this, this um, how, how, how can you do it practically, right? So for example, um, you can uh, adapt it according to your family context or dynamics. So option A, right? for instance, you can have two containers, right? Um, design these tokens, or if you want, you can buy somewhere, or if not, just make some cupboard, right? To 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 just create all these tokens, right? Um, put down the number 30 minutes. I right? one unused tokens, the other one used tokens, right? So each time they have used, um, uh, uh, they want to use the token, they take from the unused tokens and put into the use tokens container or the token use container. That's option A, right? If you want to track based on daily basis, like Monday to Sunday, right? You can split up into seven different tokens, Monday, Tuesday, blah, 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 until Sunday. And um, with that, there's one token, which is the unused token. So each time when they use the unused tokens, right? They put into the um, uh, respective container. This helps to identify <clears throat> your child's spending pattern for their playtime tokens. All right. So, so for the for those of you, um, uh, if you uh, are not clear uh, and worried that this doesn't work, I just want to uh, let you know that in the research that uh, I have did before, um, I, ha I have a parent that says that they like this concept so much, right? They say that it is wonderful not to have keep saying no when they ask to watch another video or show or play video games, right? Or computer games because all they need is just to ask, do you have any tokens left, right? So this is the, the, the number of tokens um, that you want to give them, you may want to uh, share with them, right? To agree what is um, a good sign. And a helpful twist, right? Just just one last point before I address the next question would be to add that um, at the end of the week, uh, for example, if they are managed to save, that means that they are unused token, it's the same as budgeting, right? Uh, you give them X dollar, they only spend Y dollar, what is left uh, is them. Right. For you, you can actually increase um, uh, by introducing that you will buy back any unused token. So this adds to the concept of not just managing their time, but also prioritizing whether they would rather have screen time or play time or get them money. Right. So I thought I just want to add that point. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So let's go to the next question, which is my child is willing to give up food. Right. That's the question. Uh, my child is willing to... Uh, so just now earlier, I have also addressed the question on uh, giving monetary rewards for helping household chores. Okay, good. So now my child is willing to give up food and use um, his all uh, all his pocket money for bookshop items and game. How, huh? Mm, yeah, this is definitely not easy for you, right? I reckon that you are probably worried that your child will be hungry after seeing how your child used all his pocket money, you know, to buy stuff from bookshop rather than food, which I believe is your intention uh, when you gave uh, him 
the allowance, right? Uh, so let me share with you a, a story. That's a true story, lah, because um, it happens to my boy. My boy is Premier 1 this year. I'm right? going to be Premier 2 this year, and he's not perfect. And, 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 but what uh, we have done is uh, we would like uh, him to manage his money, right? So what we started doing is we give him about $2 a day, right? So... um. So what happens to him is he actually uh, one day, right, when he came home excitedly, um, tell us that uh, he has bought something. Uh, so I, uh, so we have been giving him $2 a day, $2 a day. Then after seeing that uh, he's able to manage, I uh, give him $10 a week, right? Then there was one particular that a few months ago, and he came back, right, sharing uh, with us something that he bought. I have no idea uh, what it is, to be honest. It's some, some, some stuff that he bought. Uh, and and um and I thought this story might come in handy, so so I've actually prepared the items, right? So he, I think he bought this. I just checked with him. I think uh, uh two days ago, right? <laughs> he says that um, uh, this looks like something that he can use it to hook, you know. Or I have no idea, you know. I I I was so 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 mad, you know. When he told me, I feel like scolding him. As why do you spend on something like this, you know, rather than buying food? Uh, do you know what happens? That's why us uh, and, and we have to listen to our spouses, all right? Then his mommy, my dearest loved one, you know, the wise darling, <laughs> stop me, says that, you know, he told me not to get too upset because let him experience the trade-off. He will soon learn that if he spend the money unnecessary on things, he will not be able to afford the things that he needs in this case, which is food. He will be hungry, right? So, um... What I'm trying to say with regards to this parent who has posed a question about the child willing to give up the food and using all his pocket money for bookshop items and games is you may want to let your child experience the natural consequences that comes along with his decision, right? Uh, it can be a wonderful opportunity for them uh, to learn as well, right? <clears throat> I hope that's helpful. Okay, uh, let's look at the next question. The next question would be, what ages of foreigners, right, can start working part-time in Singapore? What ages of foreigners can start working part-time in Singapore? Mm, well, essentially, you are not allowed to work in Singapore if you do not have a work pass. Uh, I think if I'm not wrong, this question is asking, can foreign students work part-time in Singapore? Right, so there are some specific requirements before they are allowed to work during uh, their vacation time. So, for example, they must be fourteen years old and above, uh, having a student pass issued by ICA, the immigration <laughs> um, issued by um, ICA, and enroll in an approved institution. So you can check uh, more. Um, more details um, about the requirements and also the list of approved institution from the MOM website, which is the Ministry of Manpower, right? So I hope that's helpful for you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the next question is, how to teach a four or five-year-old about money? Wow, I try to uh, bring them to NTUC and teach, but um, they, uh, he or she uh, doesn't seem to understand. How do you teach a four to five year old that will be a preschooler, right? Try to bring them to NTUC, but doesn't seem to understand, right? Definitely for preschooler, it is not easy because they are young. Um, they may not have a good grasp of the concept of money, right? So to us, uh, insurance can be money, can be uh, investments, can be money. You know, different things, right? Your coins, your dollar notes your digital pay, uh, your, your your banks, whether is it the invisible or the, the, the visible, these are money, right? For them, um, uh, um, they need to grasp, they need to be able to relate to uh, money, right? So I remember my first experience of teaching my boy. I have two children. Uh, my boy is P1. Um, I have a daughter as well. My daughter is 11 plus months old, thank God. Um, and, uh, so this experience is about my son. Uh. So um, when my son was a preschooler, right? So what happens is we bring uh, him to school, to the preschool, right? He has a habit of eating snacks. So one day, 
my uh, wife and I were discussing, uh, why don't we teach him uh, savings by using the snacks that he loves, you know, since he loves so much. So what we did is we shared with him that if he saves, uh, saves some, he will have his favorite nuts later. So initially, <laughs> he munched up all the snacks, not leaving anything and demanding that he want his snacks, right? Then he will scream and shout, wanting the 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 nuts so we share that uh, we can pass him some you know when he's safe lah, for tomorrow so it lasted for about uh, two weeks and this continues and suddenly uh, we have an aha moment do you know what happened he says daddy you know uh, I want to save my snacks for nuts wow I tell you it dawned on me that uh, for preschooler and for him right um, we need to help him connect the dots <clears throat> using the appropriate activities uh, in this case and, and also items that he can relate to. In this case, is about teaching money without using money, right? For us, we'll be using snacks that he loves. Um, I hope this concept is helpful for you, that you can actually advocate um, uh, savings, right, by using items that he likes, items that he can relate to on a daily basis, right? Uh, teaching money concepts without using money. <clears throat> So uh, there's another uh, question here. Mm, this uh, 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 participant or this viewer was saying, you know, when should kids um, <coughs> sorry, when should kids learn about investing? What type of investment should we start with, and should we recommend our investments like ETFs to them? Well. Uh, you can uh, uh, um, you can start small and simple. Uh, incidentally, this year, I think, is it this year or, be, uh, or end of last year, I've introduced uh, investing to my boy, you know. Uh, so uh, it's a very good thing that this parent is asking this question, wanting to, 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 to introduce them to investment. So depending on their risk appetite, uh, I would say that Singapore savings bonds is a good start. They are safe. You can invest up to 10 years with interest that step up. The longer you save, the higher the return. And it's flexible because you can choose to exit your uh, investment in any given time, uh, month, right, with no penalties, right? So so um, what happens to my family is I actually discuss with my son. I say that, hey, the angpao money that you have, the, the savings that you have been saving right, into the joint bank account that we have, I uh, say, Papa wants to help you to grow your money, right? So I gave him two options. Uh, so that was the actual conversation that I had with him. And I says that, do you want something safe, right? That means you put this amount, then definitely you will grow money, but um, um, uh, it's safe and you will grow, but not much. Uh, um, like about, I, he don't, he still don't understand 2%. So I says that, yeah, it will grow, you will get uh, money, um, but uh, not much as compared to the other one, right? Um, You will grow, right? Uh, but the, 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 it will have more than the first option, uh, which is Singapore Savings Bond, but he do not know why Singapore Savings Bond. The other one, uh, which like this parent uh, who asked the question, I was thinking about ETF. In fact, uh, using it as an illustration, uh, I like Vanguard, right? So that's my personal option. So so I was thinking of looking at one of those Vanguard fund that, <clears throat> that I want to invest with. Um, uh, so I told him says that uh, that may lose money, right? That it, which is equal to risk because at P one he don't really understand uh. So he uh, so he just know that one is safe, guaranteed will make money, but maybe not as much as option B, right? May make more, but you may lose money. So do you know what he tell me? He said, Papa, no, no, no. I want guaranteed. I want something safe. You know, I want to make sure that I will uh, uh make money, right? So um, for those of you, uh, if you have a higher risk appetite or your child has a higher risk appetite. Uh, there are certain uh, financial advisory or fund management platforms that allow the parent to set up a joint account with their children even though they are below 18 years old. So you can consider opening up a joint account to embark on this um, investment uh, journey uh, uh, with them. All right? <clears throat> okay. So uh, the next question. <clears throat> Shall I give a P3, P3 which is a primary three kid a daily allowance or weekly ah wish him to manage his own money and savings i come to know that he will buy drinks for the school cleaners wow that is awesome man uh, uh, i can see that he really have a heart for people when it comes to managing daily or uh, weekly, I think it really depends whether your child is able to manage uh, on a daily basis is sorry 
if he's able to handle that, um, then weekly allowance uh, can be the uh, next step, right? Uh, I can really tell, I mean, for somebody who wish to buy uh, drinks for the school cleaners, means that you have a heart um, for people, right? The, your child has a heart for people. Uh, you can make use of that opportunity to introduce him. Um, or if you have a daughter that has uh, uh, a similar practice, right? The concept of uh, saving, spending, and sharing, intentionally setting aside a portion for saving, uh, for spending, for sharing. For example, if he has uh, $15 a week, right? $2 can set aside for savings, $12 for spending, and $1 meant for uh, sharing. So in other words, doing a simple math, let's assume that the drink is less than a dollar or one dollar. He can aim to bless one cleaner with one dollar drink once a week. Right? So that's one approach. Right? Um, so th th this, this is what um, and I have actually started. Just now, I think I've alluded, right, that uh, my P-boy, P1 boy, when we first introduced, I wasn't very confident that he's able to manage a weekly allowance. So we started off with a, a daily allowance, right? Um, so I check out, you know, what's the rate over in the canteen. Then I find that $2 is fair for him. Um, uh, so we decided to give him $2 a day, right? So over time, I saw that he's able to manage uh, $2. Uh, that's the reason why uh, now I have um uh I'm I'm giving him ten dollars a week right um yeah and, and so far he has been able to spend within uh, his means so with that I would like to share the same concept uh, to you you start small first right until he's able to manage uh daily then you start off with weekly right <clears throat> thank you okay um the next one would be. Any recommendation for apps or platform for investment? Ah, um, I'm not sure if you have joined. Uh, okay, if you have come to know who is IFL, as IFL conducts free and unbiased financial education programs, we aim to provide you with financial education and guidance only, right? So as such, there's no advice on product selection or recommendation of any services. So um, uh, un we are unable to recommend uh, any specific apps or products for investment. That should it be mentioned, as I shared earlier at the beginning of this AMA segment, is purely for illustration, application, or concept. Uh, one practical way, uh, some of you may be thinking, say, hey, I really want to know then how. Um, I have a best friend who incidentally I happen, um, I believe that uh, he is he or she is also your best friend. And that is our favorite friend that starts with G, right? Uh, it starts with Google, right? It's, it's called Google. So so, uh, you can actually do a search on the best apps for investing in Singapore um, um, or articles on platform um, uh, uh, for investment in Singapore. So, usually there will be suitable resources that pop up and you can find out more from uh, the search engine. There, there, there will be different uh, influencers, different uh, bloggers that will be blogging it. So, uh, you can find out more. I, I hope uh, that helps. <clears throat> okay. Next question. In the digital age, how to teach children uh, to track their savings? What tools and apps are available to help multiple children keep track of their savings? Wow. Uh, in the digital age, how to teach children to track their savings? What tools um, and apps are available to help multiple uh, children to keep track of their uh, savings. Okay, first of all, maybe I talk about teaching them first, right? Um, it depends on how old are your children. Um, if your children are young, uh, you can try this, right? You can try uh, simulating a game at home for your children to practice, for example, using cash or digital payments. Um, you can create an imaginary canteen at home. Uh, giving them a cash allowance, you know, um, um, play a game with them. You're allowing them to practice paying for their food or receiving change um, uh, at home. Um, uh, assuming uh, uh, that this is a digital payment, for example, uh, these days there's this smart buddy watch, right? You can get a toy watch for them or you can design one, right? To allow them to practice a digital payment. I think, you know, how much is this? Um, uh, how much um, uh, is that, you know? And explain uh, to your child that the money will be deposited in this watch and have fun uh, getting your child to pretend using the watch for payments, right? So um, um, for older kids, 
perhaps uh, you can try this, right? Um, you can experiment asking them to take up a challenge to use cash only for a week versus digital payments for a week or for a month, right? Uh, get them to track your expenses, right? Then with that, I think the debrief is important um, because it's the money conversations that takes this uh, after this kind of exercise that will help them to be aware of the unintended consequences of overspending as a result of digital payments. So typically, um, uh, those of you, if if I would ask you, uh, if you were to use cash only as compared to use your credit card or use digital payment mode, I'm uh, research has shown that actually those of us who um, who use money that is outside our mind, like digital payment modes or credit cards, uh, right? We'll 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 have a tendency to spend more, right? Because we do not feel the pain. It's invisible money, which is actually tangible, right? So when we don't see it, we tend to spend more, right? Um, in terms for the specific uh tools and apps, um, uh, you can actually just Google to find whether it's suitable. I mean, just how. I, Alluded right, there's the there's a popular smart buddy watch that people are using. I think there are certain uh cards uh that the the some of the commercial entities that has also introduced. Um, uh, I have not tried any one of them. The only one that I tried is the smart buddy watch. Unfortunately, my son is not ready for digital payments, so I want to be very honest with you. I have not introduced um digital payment modes to him yet. Right, uh, he is still learning to manage uh cash. I'm still toying the idea of introducing it uh, perhaps uh, next year, you know, when he starts uh, P2, right? <clears throat> Thank you. I hope this helps. Huh? Next one. I like his thoughtfulness of to treat others. What is the recommended portion of savings and spending? Uh, this is probably uh, similar to the earlier parent who talked about the, the, the child liking to treat the cleaners, right? Uh, drinks, right? So uh, it's heartening to hear. Uh, so same thing, you can consider introducing the concepts of saving, spending, or sharing to your child, right? Um, for those of you, if you're unaware, Money Sense has came up the financial planning guideline. So in terms of savings, uh, the recommended guideline is at least 20% for savings, right? Um, and the remaining will be 80%, right? Uh, so truth be told, uh, I want to be practical and, and honest with you. Uh, my son, uh, we started with 10% rather than 20% because um, uh, $2, 20% would be uh, 20, uh, 40 cents, right? So he would have 160 left. So um, here he has been uh, trying to save uh, 10% or if not slightly more. Uh, then the remaining he can apportion for spending on, on and sharing. So with that, you can contextualize it according to your family dynamics, according to um to how your your child is managing, right? <clears throat> okay. Next, ah, how to teach P1 uh school ch children to track uh to, to track money and to invest in the digital age. Since there is very little physical money in use and there's no tangible um, yeah, I think what it meant is uh, very hard to track. So it's, I think it's the same uh, thing that I mentioned earlier uh, uh, when I talk about uh, when this parent is asking, right, in this digital age, how to track, how to teach children, how to track their spending. So the same thing, uh, this is definitely a concern that most parents would have. As I shared with you earlier, um, I struggle with it and I, um, I want to make sure that my boy is able to manage his physical uh, money well first before I transit him to digital payments. So uh, for digital payments, I mean, the popular one that the, the schools are using, I believe, is Smart Buddy Watch, uh, which you can um, uh, uh, try it, right? For a start, you can allow them, uh, allow him to practice at home, as I shared earlier, by creating um, uh, like a marketing or canteen, right? Allowing him to use this um, so-called digital payment watch or a toy watch, right, um, to to pay, right, and explain to them, you know, um, uh, how to use it and the purpose of of uh, this 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 watch. And uh, although there's no money, no physical money, but that actually there is money because this money is deposited uh, into their account. Uh, is actually embedded in uh in a program itself so if they do not understand uh what what happens is uh, you you get him to practice first at home then uh when the time is ready um uh, you can get him to try uh, in school uh, hopefully they are able to manage uh, which i have not tried as i shared with you honestly uh then with that uh, you can scale up 
right? Take one step at a time. Uh, handle cash first. Once they cash, they're more confident. You move in, uh, move on to uh, um, uh, to digital payment. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> okay, I use uh, sharing as a donation. <clears throat> So he uses his spending money, right? If he wants to buy um, uh, anything for anyone. So this is the part on, I use sharing as a donation. Um, um, so he uses, uh, he uses his spending money if he wants to buy anything for anyone. Sharing is for people who need it, even animal uh, shelters, right? Uh, so that's great. Yes, you are right. Um, sharing can be a donation, and for those who need it, um, um, and 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 also you can share to those who need it, and also a, a cause that yourself or your kids are support. In this case, of uh, is animal shelters. Um, so different one of us maybe we support different causes, right? Some of us we support uh, we sponsor children like uh, my wife and I we sponsor um a few children and some maybe they have a heart for migrant workers and some may even uh, give through uh, platforms. Now there's a lot of platforms um who are helping to raise money for those who are struggling. You know, uh, this can also be considered um as uh sharing, right? Uh, as sharing. <clears throat> okay, so um. I saw that the uh, next question, uh, yeah, is at <clears throat> uh, at what age is appropriate to, to give them a, a debit net card, right? <clears throat> at what age um, is appropriate to give them a debit uh, net card? Okay, I think it depends whether uh, the child is able to handle uh, digital uh, payments well. Okay, one way to gauge is whether they are able, they are ready, right, uh, to limit the money, you know, um, um, to, to manage the money in the account and see uh, whether they are able to spend within their means, right? Uh, and also to keep the card well. I think for our children, sometimes we may lose, uh, they are not very good at keeping their stuff. Like my boy, sometimes I'm also very worried that he loses his stuff. So making sure that they lose, uh, they don't lose it. Um, so for myself, I think my parent, um, uh, gave me when I was in uh, primary school. I think if I'm not wrong, it's in primary four, primary five, if I'm not wrong, right? But every child is different. So perhaps some is able to handle it better while uh, some takes a while uh, to uh, manage uh, it, right? So with that, I hope that's helpful. Okay. So how to educate um a 10-year-old understand the value of um, money, right? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the value of money. Uh, so price and values are different, right? So uh, I think one uh, one way would be, I think step one, um, is your child able to manage on the daily basis, right? right? That's, that's one. Then after that, if he's able to manage on a weekly basis, that's um, um, the importance of budgeting. Then when it comes to the value, I think that uh, you need to introduce uh, work, right? You need to introduce the value of work um that uh, in order for them to um to have money they need to work but this is a bit tricky um so because what happens is because in especially in singapore context uh some people uh, don't really like to um uh, introduce um to remunerate um uh, uh chores for work uh, earlier i talked about the basic responsibilities then there's also uh, uh, responsibility that, that is beyond their scope. So if you are willing uh, to try, you can you can find tasks right that is beyond their scope. Then allowing them to work right once they work, then you remunerate them accordingly. Uh, that is probably one way they can appreciate the value of money. Another way would be you may want to um find opportunities right um that uh, if you are. Uh, if you have family members, uh, if you have loved ones whom um, your your kid, uh, because 10-year-olds uh, is primary 3, going to be primary 4, I think they have some cognitive ability uh, that involve uh, seeing people at uh, work, 
right? So I remember when I was in primary school, uh, my dad actually um, uh, get me to be involved in in helping out to give flyers, you know, um, um, then uh, giving out flyers, uh, then giving some uh, pocket money. Then uh, in another instances, I remember uh, my uncle, uh, who has passed on, he's in a funeral business. So uh, my mom was asking me, I'm a primary school kid, huh, by the way, um, uh, asking me to help to do some work as well, to help to to, to do some funeral work, lah. Yeah, you know, by 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 uh, by passing some some stuff, by uh, tidying up some stuff. So uh, that can be one possible way by introduce them chores that are beyond their basic uh, responsibility, right? Uh, do not just remunerate them just because they make their bed and just because they uh, keep their dishes. That one is their basic responsibility, right? I, I hope that's helpful. <clears throat> okay, so um, you were saying about the Poki uh, Mon Kat. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> so the this one is um uh, how can I make my son understand that buying Pokemon cards and toys is unnecessary and uh a waste of money? Wow, well, um mm, well I think uh because every kid, I think for those of you who has uh, joined earlier, you will know that uh, our child will also have wants, just as you, right? Uh, you may have wants, I do not know, do you go to spa? Do you go for facial? You, you, you may have items that you really like. So I think the big questions that uh, we need to ask ourselves is, is your child using um, his, uh, the money that he saved uh, to buy these cards? Or is it spending uh, unnecessarily? Like for example, right? Um, um, uh, spending money on Pokemon cards and stinging on on food, then right? affecting his health. Then of course that is a big issue, right? Because uh, one approach uh, that you can do is to allow him to experience the trade off that comes along. Um, uh, with eating uh, less, so that he can use the Pokemon card, right? But if he is um um. If he's just buying this 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 card, uh, what you can uh, possibly explore, right? Explore is to use this an opportunity to uh, um to introduce the concept of saving goals, right? So for example, it is something that they really like. Uh, as we have a lot of things that we like as well that we want, so we in order for us to buy those stuff, in order for us to travel to those location that we want, we need to set aside savings first, right? So same thing. You may want to establish that with your child, uh, getting him to set aside a saving goal. You know, say once they meet the saving goal, uh, this percentage or this portion can use to buy um, the item that he really want, uh, that he really desire. So some of these things, um, some of this situation, uh, we can possibly introduce, right, to allow them to um, to experience um, and to learn some uh, financial concepts um, that can uh, can guide them. Right for this case would be uh, savings uh, goal. Right, I I hope that's helpful. <clears throat> okay, how to teach a four year old what is a need and a one? All right, everything seems to be a need uh, for him. Wow. Um. Yeah. This is. This is true. This is true. Uh, uh, one way is to start small, and you can start with the uh simple and obvious one. A need is a must have. A uh, one is a wish to have. Right. So in IFL, our money sense for a child, we have this uh need and one checklist. You know, and which you can also design for yourself to 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 just play along with them and asking them uh what uh, is this a need. Is this one you can actually design in such ways uh, that it can be obvious. Lah. For example, you can introduce uh, food, uh, the groceries, the fish, you know, um, um, milk, uh, bread. Then the obvious ones are ice cream, um, maybe uh, the sweets, so on and so forth. Uh, getting them to practice um, uh, identifying what exactly is a need or what. Uh, I want to qualify that it's not easy. And the, the, the main purpose here is to connect with them, uh, allowing them to understand that um, uh, a need is something that is a must-have, right? Uh, for example, if they don't eat, they will go hungry, correct? Uh, a one is something that you wish to have. If they don't eat ice cream, 
right? Does it matter? If let's say they, if they only have money to buy food versus ice cream, uh, by just by eating ice cream, you will not be able to fill their stomach, right? You just have that sense of sweet taste. Um, but the food itself will enable them um, um, to last for the day. I Yeah, this is one way. Um, that means getting um, daily activities or daily items, right? Getting them to differentiate between a need or a want, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, my preschooler always want to buy toys for himself. <clears throat> How should we educate uh him uh to spend uh wisely? Um well uh, uh my preschooler always wants to buy toys for himself. How should we educate him? to spend uh, wisely. Well, a good start in teaching him how to spend wisely is to, uh, well, I mean, it's the same question as the uh, the earlier parent, right? A need and want, is to educate them how to differentiate between a needs and wants. Uh, so later at the end, uh, we are going to come to the end of the AMA segment soon. So uh, we are going to flash a QR code when you can download the IFL Learning uh, Kit activities and learning kit. So there's an activity there that says that on categorizing between the needs and one, right? So um, you can uh, find out more. If not, you can also attend our uh, activity-based workshop. Our trainer will share more. So uh, the activity kit uh, uh, talk about how you can introduce this activity to them, asking uh, them uh, what are needs, you know. Um, another one that you may want to introduce, which I think I've shared earlier, is to introduce the concept of saving, spending, and sharing, right? Um, um, so like setting aside the 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 uh, money gifts you know the unbound money that he received for saving for spending and sharing um so uh, my family, in fact, my boy, uh, my wife tried this with my boy by letting him use a certain percentage of the angpao money um, uh, that uh, our family gave him, you know, the uncle, auntie, uh, the grandpa and grandma gave him um, to buy something that he likes while the rest is being set aside uh, for, uh, for savings, right? <clears throat> okay, so... Um, the other one is I want to open a bank account for my eleven year and thirteen year old children. Uh, which bank account? Uh, which bank account <clears throat> do you recommend, and why so? Uh, and why? Right. <clears throat> well, I repeat. Ah, uh, I want to buy. Eh, no, sorry. I want to open a bank account for my eleven year old and thirteen year old children. Which bank account? Bank and uh. Why bank account do you recommend? Why so? Um, well, as IFL is not associated with any financial institution, uh, we do not recommend or endorse any financial products or services. So you can try doing a search um with Google, our dear best friend, to see um uh, what are some options out there. So generally there will be a few options that pop up. Um you can compare them. Uh, based on, like, for example, compare them based on fees and charges, whether is there any minimum balance fee, whether it's a coin deposit fee, whether any minimum um, uh, deposit or age, uh, age required, you know, compare the different interest rates. And some of you, maybe you would prefer that they have multiple, um, uh, uh, the, the ATM access, all right, or the, the mobile or online banking access. And, and what are some of the key benefits um, out there, right? <clears throat> Okay, um, maybe I'll take one or two more questions, then after that, we'll come to the end of the AMA uh, uh, segment, right? <clears throat> okay, my, um, okay, so my nine-year-old uh, regularly uses her pocket money to buy things for her friend, but then she says she runs out of money. Any advice how to deal uh, better? Um, well, I think the concept of, and uh, uh, trade-offs is important. Uh, and that means that um, if they buy, if he buys things for her friend, uh, why is he buying? Why is she uh, buying things for her friend? Uh, is it because her friend needs money? So I think we need to investigate further. Uh, so uh, I think the concept of saving, spending, or sharing needs to be introduced um, to her. Um, setting aside a portion for savings, a portion for 
spending and a portion for sharing. If she has a heart or she uh, not saying that has heart, what I mean if if she would like to share something from a friend, maybe she can come up from the uh, sharing budget. But importantly, uh, if if it's continuing a uh, run out of money, so I think a money conversation uh, needs to take place uh, to, to find out uh, why is she uh, buying things for her friend? Is it because her friend is struggling financially or what? Um, so uh, if need be, uh, maybe um, uh, uh, if, if that's the key reason, uh, maybe we may even need to highlight to her friend's parents. So this is a bit complicated, right? <clears throat> Oh well, um, uh, there's this this question says that do we actually, uh, let our child go hungry if <laughs> anyhow spend? Uh, um, first of all, I think my perspective, uh, not everyone will agree. So I want to share with you, this is uh not representative of IFL. Uh, I I believe in uh, natural consequences. So if let's say if our child is given X dollar for an allowance, for instance two dollars, uh, for an allowance, right, and he spend he or she spend on items like this, right, um, um, this is actually an item that my son spent, and I asked him how much, he was telling me it's one dollar eighty cent, and I gave him two dollars, uh, um. Uh, a day for his allowance, right? So, um, uh, naturally, if he spent one dollar eighty cent, he left with twenty cent. Uh, he will not have the money to buy uh food for during his recess time, right? So he needs to ex uh, experience the trade off that comes along with it. Um, so I personally think that unless there's a health issue, uh, it's important to allow them to experience the natural consequences that comes along with it. Uh, uh, then, of course, um, there has to be a money talk conversation taking place to, to understand, um, to, to let them know that we care for them, uh, says that we, um, uh, we are concerned that their health is being affected, coming from a posture of love, of a posture of care, and encourage them to manage their money well. Then you may want to revert back in in terms of weekly allowance, right? You may stick to a daily allowance such that they are ready and then uh, you introduce a weekly allowance, right? So yes, I would think that uh, this is just my personal uh, perspective. Uh, uh, we will need to let them experience the natural consequences that comes along with it. Okay, maybe final question. <coughs> okay, does early emphasis on wealth groom the child in a relentless pursuit of financial success and preventing them to fi from finding satisfaction in life? The, uh, the answer that I have is I do not know. I honestly do not know. But I would like to, um, to, to, um, to talk about this principle uh, that suddenly just flashed across my mind, right? And in my heart. Um, it's not money is not the one that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money, right? So I think that it's important for us to inculcate the values of gratitude as well, to be thankful, to, to be thankful um, of the things that they have um, and the things that uh, the family have right um are not just uh, over, overwhelming just just consume um about um the pursuit of money so uh, uh my personal humble uh, view is maybe uh if a child is constantly being exposed to um to just being so focused on accumulation perhaps um, uh, the mind and the heart that's being shaped is finding security in wealth. And uh, that may not be something that uh, we want to do that. Uh, so, so of course, uh, there are different things that we want to inculcate our uh, children with. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, our family is very big on this is uh, I want to uh, teach my children to have a heart of gratitude, right? And the attitude of gratitude, right? And, and also the importance of work ethic. Uh, but I just want to let you know that um, um, although I'm a master trainer from Institute for Financial Literacy, truth be told, I also struggle with uh, my son. And we would have tension, we would have disagreement, um, but I have learned from my beloved darling, <laughs> my wife, it says that uh, there's this famous quote that he uh, that she likes to use. It's not, uh, your child is not um, uh, is not giving you a hard time. He is having a hard time. So uh, what we want to do is to advocate the different values that we want to uh, want them to develop uh, such that um, uh, life itself is not just about money. Lah, 
I uh, thank you for your question. I I know that I did not really answer the last question. Um, is to just to 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 share some thoughts that we want to inculcate our child more than just the pursuit of money, uh, which I think this parent is trying to allocate uh, to alluded to right. Uh, is also the other aspects of life, um, growth mindset, you know, gratitude, right, work ethic. Right, uh, integrity, honesty, uh, friendship, um, yeah, so on and so forth. Thank you very much. With that, um, we have come to the end of the AMA uh segment. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to let you know that IFL has developed some collaterals that participants can use to share important money habits with their children. So as I shared earlier, you can actually download the activity kits by scanning the QR code or the links that's provided here. Um, and these kits provided, um, and, and these are being taught to our participants, right, that attended our, uh, our uh, workshop or activity-based workshop on Money Sense for Your Child, right? So, uh, and we have also lined up a series of Money Sense workshop uh, in the month of uh, this month, as well as December. You know, should you are keen, uh, you can sign up through our uh, website event page, which I'm sharing with you in the next slide here. Right. Uh, there are also other topics in our upcoming public session that you can explore with, that you can check it out. Um, and should there be any one of you that works for a company and you would prefer us to bring, um, uh, not money sense for your child, but we have a list or suite of products uh, from the different pillars like money management, insurance planning, investing plan, uh, investment, retirement planning, you know, legacy planning, uh, so on and so forth. Um, you can actually uh, contact us and one of our trainers uh, can go to your company right to conduct uh, for uh, your staff you know um and 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 uh, uh, during a lunchtime talk or if not can do it over an online uh, session as well right just want to sell some goyo here and um, uh, digital financial cleaning is something that we've introduced uh, uh, and this is uh, super good I really find it uh, super I personally has went through uh, with many of our participants so this is a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our volunteers uh, or trainers and just want to let you know that they will not be selling of products and services as we are an education institute so the objective of uh, the, the financial health clinic right is to understand your financial health and to guide you uh, to take practical steps to improve it. Uh, for instance, addressing gaps in your financial planning, um, build financial resilience, or to be better prepared for your retirement, right? Um, so just want to let you know, these are some comments from participants who have went through our uh, digital financial health clinic. Very useful information, directing to resources relevant to my questions. Facilitator was good in explaining uh, legacy planning. Uh, one of the participants even commented that this is probably the one of the best unbiased help that I have come across. It has helped me with addressing my financial questions a great deal. And I find this... Uh, very uh, useful session. So I want to encourage viewers to give this Digital Financial Health Clinic a try. And for those of you who are staying near Kampong Emirati Community Plaza, currently there's a Take Charge of Your Career Roadshow. Some of our colleagues are there. Um, if you prefer a physical financial health clinic, you can check it out, right? Uh, which ends tomorrow, right? So today, I think the ends at 7. Tomorrow is ends at 7. So if you prefer a physical one, um, you can actually check it out while we are there. Right? If not, just go for the digital financial health clinic. So you have more questions after today and there are... Uh, uh, um, questions that you want to uh, um, find out more, you know, you, you would like uh, us to address, you can go to our community learning platform, FinLearn. Our, mon our, moderator our moderators will be there <clears throat> to answer questions that are posted on this platform. So you can read the answers, you can post your questions or even answer ad other people's questions, right? So this is a great way to continue your learning uh, journey. Right. So this is our social media platforms. Our website is ifl.org.sg for those who are not aware. Um, uh, do like us, like our Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our Telegram channel. Right. Finally, uh, we would like to hear from you, your feedback. So uh, we really appreciate you could help us by scanning the QR code, by sharing with us, you know, how well we have done, you know, what are some things that we can improve on. With that, I wish you a lovely Friday and a good weekend ahead. Thank you so much for your question and for your participation. Bye-bye.